Welcome to today's program, friends. This is Bobby. And I'm Frank. <laughs> and we have a program today that's a little unusual, a little out of the norm of what we have been bringing. But I know it's God's will for us to bring it to you. And it's really blessed me especially, and I hope it'll bless you. It's called A Merry Heart Doeth Good Like Medicine. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Uh, there's so many things that a merry heart does to our body. A merry heart, to start off with, it soothes our attitude so that we can respond properly to people. Medicine often reduces pain, and a merry heart does the same thing. A merry heart reduces the pain of hurt feelings, failed expectations, and misunderstanding. A medicine also makes one feel better, especially when an infection is removed. A merry heart makes us feel better about the situations with which we are confronted with. Dr. Norman Cousins, who taught at the UCLA Medical School was diagnosed with a rare disease. The doctors told him, <clears throat> sorry sir, but this is incurable. You're going to die. Dr. Cousins decided on a regimen of <clears throat> excuse me, on a regimen of exercise, high doses of vitamin C, and added an unusual thing, laughter. He rented comedy movies and cartoons and watched them for hour after hour each day. He discovered that 10 minutes of hearty laughter gave him a whole hour free of pain. And that's something. He began to get better the day came when he went back to the doctor. And the doctor said, I don't know what's happened to you because this was an incurable disease. But as far as we know, you're completely cured. Glory to God. He lived another 20 years and wrote a book on how to have a cheerful attitude or lack thereof. This can determine your health. Um, I've been battling some physical things lately, and the Lord laid this on my heart during that time. I kept hearing him say, Mary Heart does good like medicine. I thought I don't have anything to be merry about right now. You ever felt that way? But you can stir yourself up. You can cause yourself to be glad. What is the greatest battle that we face, Frank? Well, one of the greatest battles that we uh, face these days, and any time really, is the battle of the mind. The battle of the mind that can impact your faith. Victory or defeat takes place in the mind. The Apostle Paul said something, and we see it in the book of Philippians, starting in chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, or brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, he says, think on these things, and the God of peace will be with you. As Christians, we should be able to think or focus on the good things. Laughter, you see, releases your body's natural medicines. It can not only bring physical healing, but laughter will help strengthen our relationships. 
we should be associating with cheerful people. You know, you become like the people that you associate with, that you hang around. They who, Proverbs 13, 20 says, they who walk with the wise grow wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. If you hang around negative or critical people, you become like them, my friend. Another thing you can do is focus on the blessings in your life. Not what you don't have, but what you have. Now, let me tell you about a doctor who had a patient who had fibromyalgia. I said it, I think. <laughs> anyway, it is a very painful thing, I hear. And she had chronic fatigue, no energy. She was in poor health, both physically and emotionally. She had gone through tough times and she had lived a basically very depressed life. The doctor gave her medication to treat the pain, but he knew this was only dealing with the symptoms and not the root cause. One day he asked her, how long has it been since you've had a good hearty laugh? The lady thought about it for a moment. And she said, doctor, I haven't laughed like that in 30 years. Not since I was a child. He told her, you need to go and find funny movies. Go find every funny book you can read and laugh as much as you possibly can she began to do that and instead of sitting around feeling sorry for herself she began to laugh little by little she got her joy back every day she'd laugh more and more she started feeling better this is a true story, my friends. She started getting better. The pain began to subside. She got her energy back. Three months later, she went back to the doctor for her checkup. And he said, the moment you walked in, I could tell something was different. There was a sparkle in her eye. A spring in her step and a smile on her face. Glory. She said, Doctor, I have never felt so good in all my life. Month after month after month, she continued to relearn how to laugh. Eventually, all these diseases left her body. There's healing power in laughter, friends. When you have a joyful spirit on the inside, health and healing are flowing. Now, Frank's going to share with you a little bit, but I wanted to tell you about myself. Uh, when the Lord laid this on my heart about this message, I began to realize that I hadn't laughed much in my life. Uh, I came from a home, it was a loving home, but nobody laughed that I can remember, and there was just more strife than there was laughter. So I grew up without really knowing how to laugh. So when I was doing this, I said, okay, Father, how can I stir myself up to laugh? I didn't hear him say anything. So I said, well, I'll just jump out there. May make a fool of myself, but nobody's hearing me but God and me and Frank in the next room, so I'm going to just launch out. And I raised up in bed and I said, ha, ha. Ha. 
Nothing happened. I said again, ha, 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 ha. I smiled on that one. And the turn, third time I said, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I laughed. It was a little chuckle, but it was a laugh. So I thought, you really can stir yourself up to laugh. Cheer Frank with us. Well, they found that through research that every time you laugh, it can actually boost your immune system. Tension can leave, creativity can come, and if you work on laughing each day, it can also help reduce blood pressure. If you stay on that prescription, the doctor says, and laugh a little each day with a happy heart, having a cheerful mind, you'll even sleep better. Mm -hmm. I want to give you some scriptures here. Hold that spot. Don't lose that spot. Let me mark it right here. <laughs> there I found three places in the book of Proverbs that deals with cheerful heart or a glad heart or a happy heart. We see it in Proverbs chapter 15 and verses 13. Proverbs chapter 15 verses 15 and Proverbs chapter 17 verses 22 and I'll start with the 13 a happy heart makes the face cheerful but heartache crushes the spirit and there's several translations here NIV New Living English Standard verse King James where he says a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken so many times with the the opposite of a happy heart you find it says heartache crushes the spirit spirit is crushed spirit is broken so many times all through those various translations a broken spirit you see how it goes now here at uh, Proverbs 15 15 they take an opposite uh, uh, approach on that. All the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. And that's used so many times throughout these various translations. A continual feast. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. And it goes through there. The Amplified says all the days of the afflicted are bad, but a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of the circumstances. Mm. Cheerful heart, continual feast. Oh. Now in Proverbs 17 and 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Another translation, broken spirit saps a person's strength. A crushed spirit or a broken spirit again dries up the bones all through. What I see here is a lot has to do with attitude. Attitude. And if nothing else, that's one thing you do have control over. You can have control over your attitude. I want to quote a fellow here that works in a cancer center. His name is Satterwhite, and he works at the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer, cancer Center. He's what they call a patient engagement specialist. He designs and facilitates communication and customer engagement programs to help focus the patient and the family experience. And he's also a prostate cancer survivor. He was diagnosed with the disease in 2007. Now he shared that humor helped him navigate away from emotions that can sink you into pity or lead you to more despair. Okay? He points out that children, on average, laugh about 300 times a day, whereas adults, on average, only about 15 times a day. If that. Yeah, if that much. 
we often are simply missing out on the many benefits of laughter. Studies show that laughter decreases our stress for about 45 minutes thereafter. Hmm. You mentioned that in your study. Yeah. This can lower cortisol, which can end up boosting the immune system. Now here's something he quotes from the National Cancer Institute. They have released studies about how humor therapy actually reduces pain and stress. And Bobby's stories brought out that, that aspect to it. And here's something from the Mayo Clinic. They share how laughter increases oxygen flow to the lungs and the heart. That can only be a good thing, okay? Uh, if you laugh, you're going to get more done. You'll have more energy. So if you're not getting much done, you think just start laughing because you'll have more energy to get things done. And like you said, you'll sleep better too. Mm -hmm. Having a cheerful mind is going to cause you to sleep better. You'll be more creative. Even some areas of chronic pain and fatigue that you've had for so long, they'll, they'll just go away. The more you laugh, the more they'll leave. Hearty laugh relieves physical tension and stress, leaving our muscles relaxed. Laughter decreases stress hormones and increases your immune cells and infection-fighting antibodies. Isn't that amazing? Thus improving our resistance to disease. Laughter improves the function of blood vessels and increases blood flow. It fights antibodies. Laughter is healthy. Laughter appears to be an especially important ingredient in recovering from life-threatening illnesses, improving our resistance to disease. So to summarize, laughter results in enhanced respiration, an increased number of immune cells, a decrease in cortisol, uh, an increase in endorphins, which help relieve pain, reduce stress, and improve your mood. An increase in... Mm -hmm. Here, let me help with that one. <laughs> this is salivary immunoglobulin, globulin, I'm sorry, type A concentrations. Those are antibodies that play a role in the immune function of the mucus in your uh, system, one it, of the first lines of defense. You know, even the world is realizing that what our minds are thinking upon affects our health, and that a merry heart is needed for our health. Your sense of humor is a gift from God. And it's been psychologically documented that laughter, along with a well-rounded sense of humor, is a sure sign of intelligence. God gave Adam and Sarah a little child Amen. and told Sarah to name him Isaac, which means laughter. Abraham Lincoln said, God must have meant for us to laugh, or else he would not have made so many mules, parrots, monkeys, and human beings. <laughs> God wants us to laugh. I know you're probably familiar with Joel Osteen. I saw on TV where he was uh, talking about his mother. She had cancer very severe. And she was standing on the Word. She was quoting scriptures. But she took it another step. She got a hold of this message. She got a hold of the scripture, Mary Hart doeth good like a medicine. 
So she went and bought a whole bunch of videos that was all comedies. Ha ha, good, funny videos. Then she bought a stack of cartoons. And she went in her room every morning. Jewel said she'd lock the door and she'd read and pray. And then she'd start her vigil of watching and listening to all these. They didn't expect her to live very long at all. She's still alive. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now, we want to tell you a few jokes that will hopefully make your heart merry. Uh, there was these three ladies that just come off the interstate and this they exited, they went to the right, and there was a sign there that said 15. And there was a patrolman that was behind him. So he weaved him over and he said, ladies, he said, are you having car trouble? You know, you're only going 15 miles an hour. She said, uh, no, sir. She said, that sign says 15. So we're obeying the speed limit and going 15. He said, <laughs> he laughed. He said, that's not a speed sign, lady. That's State Road 15. And he looked in the back, and there was two passengers with him, and their faces were just as white as a sheet. And he said, what's wrong with them? She said, oh, we just got off 95. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Uh, you want to tell one? Well, I'll have to have the book, but I did want to reemphasize something here. Read that one. I'll tell you another one while he's uh, getting this all together. There was this nun, and she was driving out the country, and she ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. So uh, she knew that she'd passed the station not too far back, and she didn't realize she was that low as she'd have stopped. But nevertheless, she got out and walked to the station, and she said, I'm out of gas. Do you have anything that I can put some gas in to carry it back to put in my car? He said, I don't think so. He said, I got a shed out back. Let me go out there and see what I can find. And all he could find was an old dirty uh, bed bedpan. <laughs> old dirty bed bedpan. And uh, that was all there was. So she took the bedpan and filled it up with water. Yes. With gas, I mean, yeah, with gas. Uh, she filled it up with gas, and she walked ever so slowly back to the car. Yeah. She took the cap off of the gas tank, and she was pouring the gasoline from the bedpan into the tank. And a car rode by, and the man rolled down his window. He said, hey, sister, you got more faith than I have. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was cute. Are you laughing? <laughs> All right, go ahead, Frank. Tell us one. Well, what I wanted to comment about was that so many times in Scripture, the Lord will tell us something. And sooner or later, somewhere down the line, science or medicine or will come along and discover <laughs> that what was said in the scriptures turns out to be true. My goodness, how about that? <laughs> well, so many times, like, like I just so, told you here, all these scriptures about, you know, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, and a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And now we see through, through research that the, the medical community comes along and confirms what the Word of God has been trying to tell you for how many thousands yeah. of years? How old is the Bible? If you grab hold of this, it can change your life. It can really change your life. You hear what it's done to these people. These people had uncurable things, some of them. Mm -hmm. But yet they was cured and raised up by laughter, by having a merry heart. 
again, it goes back to our attitude. Yep. If, if you have nothing, no control over anything else, at least you can have control over your own attitude. That's about the way you look at life, the way you, you perceive things. And if you, if you get the Word of God in you and know that God really does love you, your attitude can start to change about a lot of things. A Baptist preacher and his wife decided to get a new dog. Ever mindful of the congregation, they knew the dog must be a Baptist. They visited kennel after kennel and explained their needs. Finally, they found the kennel owner who assured them that he had just the dog they wanted. The owner brought the dog to meet the pastor and his wife. Fetch the Bible, he commanded. The dog bounded to the bookshelf. He looked through the books. He located the Bible and brought it to the owner. Now find Psalms 23, he commanded. The dog placed the Bible on the floor and showing marvelous dexterity with his paws, leafed through it and finding the correct passage, pointed to it with his paw. The pastor and his wife were just very impressed and they purchased the dog. That evening, a group of church members came to visit. The pastor and his wife began to show off the dog, having him locate several Bible verses. The verses were very impressed. The visitors were very impressed by the dog. One man said, can you do regular dog tricks too? I haven't tried yet, the pastor replied. His po he pointed his finger at the dog. Heal, the pastor commanded. The dog immediately jumped on a chair, placed one paw on the pastor's forehead, and began to howl. The pastor looked at it, looked at his wife in shock, and said, "Good Lord, he's Pentecostal." <laughs> <laughs> mm. In-house joke there. <laughs> uh, time to wrap it up. Laughter is medicine to the soul. Amen. Yeah. Uh, it's time for us to go. We're about out of time. Uh, I hope you've been blessed by today's program. If you'd like to have a copy of it, we'd love to send it to you. Just let us know. If you can enclose a donation to help with the ministry, it would be greatly appreciated. But if you don't have it, we'll send it to you anyway. So this is Bobby. And this is Frank. God loves you, my friend. And so do we.